continuous exponential growth or decay. We're going to be using the formula P of T equals A times E to the BT, where P is the population at T years into whatever the situation is. A is the initial population, and B is the growth or decay factor. So very often we'll be given some information about a certain growing or decaying population. And what we'll need to do is look for ordered pairs and then use technology to help us find the exponential uh, regression model. So in this video, I'm going to show you how Desmos helps me solve problems like this, Desmos Graph and Calculator. So here's a typical context. In this case, the population is going to be increasing. In 2007, the population of Florida residents age 65 and over was about 3.1 million. In 2015, those, the number of residents age 65 and older was 4.13 million. And there are three prompts, and these are typical prompts. One is to create a model for the number of Florida residents age 65 and over, where T equals seven is the year 2007. And T equals 15 is the year 2015. According to the model, what will the number of Florida residents aged 65 and over be in the year 2020? And make a prediction, when will the number of Florida residents aged 65 and over reach 6 million? So I'll show you how I solve this, okay? I take the text from the problem and I put it on a Desmos graphing calculator as a note. So I added a note and I wrote the prompt down. I wrote parts A, parts B, and parts C. I'm going to show you how I use the technology to solve these problems. I then went to my toolbar. I changed my window so that I'm going to be looking at the graph. So I had negative 2 for the x to 28. I had negative 2 for the y going up to 10. I labeled my x-axis, my independent variable, as years since 2000. And my y I'm labeling as the population of Florida in millions age 65 and over. From there, I'm going to use the context given in the problem. The first context clue is that in 2007, so seven years past 2000, the population of these Florida residents were 3.1 million. So you can see that this point, 7 comma 3.1, is going to lie on my curve. 15 years after 2000, so in 2015, the population of the 65 and over residents were 4.13 million. Now I want to graph an exponential curve uh, with the base of E that goes through these points. And so that's where the regression, uh, to the technology comes into play. You're going to uh, type here, we want an equation between y1 and x1. So we're going to do y1. Then we use tilde. Tilde is that little shift, uh, that little wiggly key below the escape. And then I need my a times e raised to the power of bx1. And immediately, with no guesswork, I get what is the best fit equation that fits through those two points. It tells me what is my A, it tells me what is my B. So because I need to be solving problems involving a function, I want to write this equation using P of X. So my A is 2.41183. I don't believe I can copy and paste that. No, you've got to just type it down. 2.411A3. Then I want E raised to the power of, here's my B, 0 0.0358594 X. And notice the blue curve goes right on top of what was the exponential regression curve. So I now feel confident that my curve, that I've correctly typed in those numbers. And I can uncheck 
um, this red. I don't need that showing. I just need my blue function. Okay, so now we're going to answer these questions. Question B, what will the population in 2020 be? So here's 2020. So the population is going to be, what, a little bit less than 5 million? So let's do P of 20. Uh, a little bit less than 5 million. And so I can add a note and I can write in 2020 the population of Florida resident residents aged 65 and over is predicted to be 4.94 million. So then the next question is a little bit more demanding. It says, when will the population for residents age 65 and over reach 6 million? So you can solve this, I mean, a bunch of ways. You really can. There's the graphical way. Um, and then there's the algebraic approach. I want to show you the algebraic approach and how Desmos can even help with that. But if I want 6 million, really I want a horizontal line at 6, right? So we can do y equals 6. And what we want to know is where did these lines intersect? They intersect at an x value of 25.415, which is really in the year 2025, right? So I can go ahead and write this as a note. In the year 2025, the population of Florida residents aged 65 and over will reach and surpass 6 million. Right, that's one way you can solve it. But I really do want to show you how powerful the technology is here and how we can just take this equation and we can manipulate it right here in the lines of Desmos. It's really wonderful. So um, I am looking for 6 million. So what I want is the number six here instead of p of x. So I copy this, I paste it, and I change whatever needs to be changed. So that's the first thing that needs to be changed. Now my next thing is I want to get x by itself because I'm solving for x, right? Um, so to get x by itself, I want to take this coefficient of the e expression, and I want to divide both sides by it. And <clears throat> notice what's happening as I'm doing this. First thing is there's this straight line. So basically, Desmos is solving this for you, showing you, but I haven't explicitly solved for x yet. And even when I do this, see this green line goes on top. So I always keep checking my graph to make sure that my algebraic steps are making sense. All right, now my next thing is I need to get x by itself. So I really want to take the natural log of both sides here, right? So I want it right here, put my um, cursor. And I want to do natural log parenthesis. And I want to do natural log of this side. And see how purple, it's still going over that same place, so I'm on the right track. Now look at the right hand side. You know what happens here. The natural log of e to the <clears throat> whatever, k equals k, right? So the right hand side just simplifies to this expression. And that equals this expression. This is a numerical expression. The natural log of something equals some big coefficient times x. I want to get x by itself. So I want to divide by this, don't I? So in my next line, and again, I always copy the equation so that I can follow my reasoning from one step to the other. I'm going to command x to get rid of this. And I'm going to do 1 over that number. Because to divide by that means I'm multiplying <clears throat> by the reciprocal. And now look, I've solved for x. I've done exactly what I set out to do. I'm getting the same thing as I got earlier. Earlier, I, we, I believe we said 25.415. And that's just what I'm getting down here with a little bit more specificity. With Desmos, when you solve graphically, it just rounds to the um, thousands place. So that is how I use Desmos to solve some problems involving exponential growth.